All right, folks, see, that didn't take very long. That didn't take very long. We're back. We're back. This is Mike. Mike's Magic Auto Detailing and Paint Enhancement slash Correction here in a sunny Sharpsburg, Georgia on a Saturday. I hope y'all are having a mighty fine weekend. Uh, you know, in the first video, I showed you the beading action and all that on the Virgin Clear Coat. But what it is, I think, <laughs> is that once... A lot of that was being caused by road film and the oils and stuff like that that gets mixed in with all that stuff that gets on your car when it rains and we had plenty of that here lately and what I wanted to show you if you remember all that beading and sheeting I just did a strip wash on the hood and I wanted to show you guys real quick like the difference in the water behavior yeah, see very little beading left a little bit up there i'm not sure why don't know why <laughs> but it's mostly a sheeting action now which tells me that that paint is pretty clean at this point i mean that's what you call squeaky clean and no i don't i don't have my pressure washer out i don't got a bunch of buckets all that stuff i'm going to show you what I did <laughs> of course I used a pretty good quality wash mitt you don't have to use this high quality and when your mitt gets dirty just lay it down on something like that get it up off the ground that's a grit guard that would normally go in a bucket I haven't used buckets on car washes for years and then you can just take it and after each section just blast the dirt out of it I would probably go to a stronger blast than this I can adjust this thing but you get the you get the picture now I would flip it over blast all the dirt and stuff out on the other side now instead of using a bucket I'll show you how I do this and to strip wash like this I use a product that you can get on the retail level folks it's called purple power vehicle and Boat pressure wash concentrate you could put this in your soap section of your pressure washer if you so desire I just dilute it down I don't know 8 10 to 1 something like that I don't really agonize over the and I just put it in a pump up sprayer this is an expensive one from Merrill X you don't have to use a high dollar one like this you can just get those eight dollar ones at tractor supply wherever it is my purple powers in there and what I do is I'll spray the section down real good with this and you know what folks when you're strip washing a car like this when you spray that soap on there let it dwell as we say in this industry for a few minutes let the chemicals do their job that is a very very strong soap and then I also saturate my wash mitt both sides and I use straight lines when I'm washing I don't use circular motions that's what they taught me and this stuff as I said folks is a very strong soap do it in the shade I wouldn't recommend it too much in the direct sunlight unless you're just going to do a small panel at a time you do not want to let this dry on your paint because it will streak it if you do trust me <laughs> it will and then you just wash it with your whatever medium you're using mitt microfiber towel one of those big sponges whatever you choose to use just always remember after every section at the most i would do half of the hood before i clean that off I'd probably do one part of it and then flip it over, do the other part, and then I would just rinse it off like I showed you guys a minute ago. But see, I don't want to let this stuff dry on here. I've already washed it. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Just using my water hose and a pretty good nozzle. And I don't I want to get all this soap off of here. I don't want to let any of it dry on the parts that I'm not washing. I'm just doing the hood right now for the purpose of these videos. And you can see that water is sheeting off of there pretty good. All right, so 
my next step will be to decontaminate it. I'll take some Iron X. There's a number of de paint decontamination products out there. I think there's some available on the retail level. And there are other products you can use that have the same active ingredient that are much, 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 much cheaper. But you're asking those products to do something they weren't designed to do. A lot of people will use wheel cleaners and dilute them down to do this. I've done it. It's, it's great in a pinch if you run out of a dedicated paint decontamination product, which normally I use one called Iron X. It's, they've been around that product for probably longest of anybody. I think they pretty much came up with the idea. <clears throat> And, uh, but you can use other things and dilute it down that will, a lot of wheel cleaners will do pretty much the same thing. They're just not quite as fast, not quite as efficient, and they're designed to do things on the wheels, but it's not what you want on the paint. It's not going to hurt it. It's just, I'd rather have a dedicated product doing what it's designed to do, supposedly. <laughs> I mean, for example, I've used that Eagle One Plasti Coat stuff. It, it works pretty good as a decon, and it's way cheaper than Iron X. I've used Meguiar's Wheel Brightener, diluted four to one to decon with. Works pretty good. Takes a little longer. When you use those decontamination products, be sure and follow the instructions on the label. Because some of them... Are designed to work one way and some of them are designed to work another way so make sure you are using the method that they prescribe for their particular product for example some of them will say let it sit for two minutes some of them will say let it sit for five or six minutes some of them say you put it on dry paint some of them say put it on wet paint some of them say put it on dirty paint some of them say put it on clean paint I would follow the instructions for the manufacturer for whatever particular product you use and I looked on Google earlier today and there are a number of retail level decontamination products on the market in spray bottles I understand most of them are pretty fair well, like I say, Iron X, I think, is the strongest one you can buy, but you'll have to order that if you want that. Very expensive. And let me tell you what, folks, all that stuff smells to high heaven. It is some of the awfulest smelling stuff I've ever smelled in my entire life. So <laughs> be prepared for that. And when you do the decon, put your gloves on. It's a, it's a very, very strong chemical. And trust me, you don't want that smell smelly stuff permeating your skin in fact usually after i decontaminate a car i go straight in the house strip those clothes off toss them in the washing machine and put clean clothes on because they will stink they will absorb this stuff and they will stink trust me a lot of people akin it to the smell of rotten eggs <laughs> so i'm going to clay bar this thing and I don't dry out before I clay bar because you're going to be putting lubrication on there anyway to clay bar. But if I were going to dry it at this point, sometimes I use what's called a dedicated drying towel. Most of the time I use a car dryer, which uses heated and forced air. But, uh, you know, some people don't want to invest in those, and I get that. I, I, you know what? I used a leaf blower for many, many years. But some of you have seen this before. But you could take this drying towel, you just kind of toss it up there, and you can just lightly drag it across the paint, and it will dry it off. And it does a much better job when there's like some kind of protection on there. But this one towel will absorb around two gallons of water. Yeah, you don't need to be rubbing and all that stuff. And regular microfiber towels will not do what this towel will do. This is just enough pressure to keep it in contact with the paint. That's all you need. And it will dry it. 
and it does a really good job. Like I say, most of the time I use the touchless drying method just because I know nine times out of ten, whenever you contact with the paint, you run the risk of leaving a little mica marring, which happens a lot. But you can see now that this paint is just clean. I mean, clean. It looks pretty darn good here, so I'm not sure how good of a demonstration this is going to be on improving your paint. I might have picked the wrong vehicle for a demonstration here. But, folks, that is no wax, no sealant, hasn't been clay barred, no nothing after sitting outside for a couple of months in the rain, you know, the weather, bugs, birds, all that kind of stuff. Ugh, that's not bad, folks. Not bad. All right. But I just wanted to show you guys some of that. Ugh. And... I keep a product called Citral 266 handy. I think this is diluted down 2 to 1, 3 to 1, something like that. In case I run across any bugs or tar, this will take care of it. Pay no attention to the Rain-X. It's just a repurposed bottle. <laughs> I do that a lot. I hardly ever throw a spray bottle away. I'll repurpose it. Put a new sprayer on it. All right, folks. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and clay bar this thing and get it ready for the next step. And I'll come back and show you guys how any of you can improve your paint dramatically in a very short period of time. It's not going to turn out perfect or anywhere near perfect, but it will improve it over 50%. I guarantee you that. Hey, Heather Long Brown. How you doing, sweetie? You got on just as I was about to get off. But I'm going to move on to the next step. I appreciate everybody dropping by. Go back and watch the other videos I just posted and get caught up because here shortly I'll be doing another one showing you guys how to just very simply, dramatically improve the appearance of your paint. Okay? All right, guys. Bye.